Hello, everyone. Welcome again to our catch up chat with um, Victor Say, our uh, resident economist here. <laughs> okay, so Victor, let me just start by um, recapping uh, what's happened uh, over the last uh, trading week. So, well, we've got risk assets off slightly, but still pretty much at elevated levels, right? Dow is 32,600 or so. S&P above 3,900, NASDAQ came off quite a bit, but um, uh, back still up above around the 13,200 level. Dollars pretty strong, almost at uh, 92 on the index. Fed decision on change. And uh, well, we've got that um, uh, supplementary leverage ratio thing, uh, which will end the schedule on 31st March. So banks will have to hold more um, capital and so they went out selling treasuries and so we've got treasuries ending up 1.73 percent again so that's caused um, uh, uh, that sell-off in uh, in the nasdaq but uh, looks like uh, reflation assets are doing well right and uh, we've got powell he tried to soothe the markets by saying the recovery is uh, still uh, far from over right so um, uh, or rather far from complete so um, uh, that kind of gave the market a little bit of support uh, in the risk assets, but uh, it looks like markets are not, not really convinced that um, uh, Powell and the Fed can stay dovish for too long, right? So 2% could be beckoning. Anyway, so um, up ahead, we've got um, some Fed speak. And in fact, Powell could be speaking on uh, Mon uh, Wednesday, I think and Lagarde as well, so, uh, and some uh, economic numbers. So um, uh, what do you think uh, of the upcoming week, Victor? Okay, um, hi folks, once again. Okay, last week we were talking about the Euro mm -hmm. and also the FOMC meeting. Right. Uh, of course, it went uh, without any event. Powell still being dovish as he will be, and probably always will be for, for the next few months, uh -huh. um, trying to soothe the market, trying to keep yields from pushing higher. Right. Uh, he succeeded. Right. He succeeded for a, for a while, right? <laughs> for maybe like twelve hours. Yeah. And then of course the market was not convinced. Uh, like you were saying, because of the expiry of the SLR, uh, uh -huh. banks have to raise capital. And therefore, they have to sell treasuries. And right. So when they sold the treasuries, it brought up the yields to a high of 1.756, I think. Yeah. Uh, high. And that gave a lot of support to the dollar. Mm. Um, of course, initially, uh, market not convinced. Uh, so the euro on Friday, I mean yesterday, that means, uh, no, on, on Thursday, sorry. Euro went to a high of 119, about 88. Right. Remember, I think I told you guys, uh, it would be tough for Euro to go even 121, let, uh, let alone 125. And the highest it got on Friday was about 119.88. And then uh, yesterday, it went down to a low of 118.75. Right? Yes. Um, yes. Had a small bounce to close the week, 119.05. So where do we go from here? Of course, with the reflation trade still alive and well and moving a bit faster, uh, and with 10-year yields closing at 173, six, about 174, uh, there's no change in outlook. Euro will probably slide bigger right. next week. Probably test the 11835 again or even lower. And I suspect Treasury 10-year uh, yields will try for 1.8 or okay. even higher. Right. Um, and Powell can say whatever he wants. Uh, he's going to try and, you know, uh, calm down the markets and all that. But uh, markets are seldom wrong. And markets will always preempt the Fed. And right. the Fed will always be behind the curve. And it will, they will start chasing very, very soon. So I'm still um, bearish. Euro, 
I think we still have a long way to go. But now, um, I think Aussie is also under threat because of the risk of uh, risky assets getting sold off mm. because of the high, high uh, yields. So uh, be on the lookout for Aussie as well. Remember, I was telling you last week I was going to talk about Aussie. PV uh, also will be will be affected because the GDP came out was uh, came out quite bad on Friday, or rather Thursday. Sorry, came out at the minus one percent instead of up zero point five percent. So it was a very nasty number. All right, so QV is in danger, uh, but not as much as the euro. Because euro, of course, the vaccine and the eurozone as a whole uh, will probably underperform, well underperform the uh, US economy. And therefore, uh, euro, US dollars will have still, I maintain, a long way to go down. So uh, be on the lookout for PMIs next week, Eurozone yeah. PMI. Uh, the manufacturing will hold up quite well, but the services PMI is still going to be in uh, so-called uh, contractionary uh, levels, like you know mm -hmm. around 46, so which is still quite bad. Uh, whereas US PMIs, uh, the services and the manufacturing will be higher than the 50%, uh, than the 50. So um, based on that, uh, your euro is going to uh, underperform against dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to do anything, all right, of course, the first thing to do is sell euro against US. But if you're afraid of just doing against US, you can do euro against Aussie. All right? Of course, Aussie is going to come down, but euro is going to come down faster. So if you sell euro against Aussie, uh, you are also quite safe but you may not make as much as when you do euro against US dollars. So therefore, I, my preference is still sell straight euro against US dollars. So be on the lookout for the PMI uh, out of Europe, out of the US, and also, of course, uh, like you're saying, uh, YC, uh, the central bankers, a whole host of them will be talking. Yeah. Uh, Powell, and there will be a central Testimony by Power and Janet Yellen, uh, mm. but really I don't know what both of them can do because the market is ahead of things. The reflation trade is there, right? Um, and I think in about two weeks' time you will have the non-farm payroll, yeah. And I think that's yes. going to be a big number. So um, I think the, the 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 bond traders they're going to push, all right? Uh, and the yield is going to go higher. Right. Before it gets over. Right. So, uh, those are my thoughts for next week. And uh, if you have to do anything, of course, it will be still to sell euros. All right, euro against US on a pullback. Uh, it closed at 11905. Right. You can get a 11920, 11930 level. It's a fantastic level to sell <laughs> to start next week. Sure. All right, so that's my take for next week. So, uh, happy trading. And again, once again, I hope that uh, this uh, little short clip will help you in your decisions. Uh, have a good week ahead and take care. So long. Goodbye. Okay. Thanks, everyone, for uh, tuning in. We'll see you again next week. Bye. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell reminder so you won't miss any special monetization opportunities. Go follow now.